to tell you that I am an achiever. I would like to achieve something, be better, be more, know more, getting things faster. Um, so that's me. I just don't fall back to say that I need to be a sweetheart in, in the office. I, I never thought of that. I never thought that I would be able to achieve that. But I would achieve the work result at the performance. Meet Dr. Gandhi Leopirod, a female CEO who has been the ideal working woman for many ties. She's the executive vice president of Future Tales Lab, a research lab that analyzes and creates future solutions, as well as providing such information to government sectors, private sectors, and the public. The job looking into the future, we have no holidays. So all the trends emerge, you know, new things popped up. 24 hours a day and actually around the globe. So um, I wouldn't say that's a challenge, I'm not complaining, but it's an it's, um, exciting thing that uh, make this job so awesome that we keep ourselves updated all the time. We're not gonna say how the future would look like. We rather analyze systematically and post it into scenarios. All this, we are actually inform um, the strategy, the decisions, but we need to tell the world this is what we, what we find and uh, tell the city this is what we know so then we can have a tangible change together. As a former lecturer at Thammasat University and having worked in top positions at different companies before, Dr. Gandhi said that her leadership style has changed over the years. Being a good coach is what remains the same, but she says she became calmer and more compassionate instead of being logical all the time. If anyone just conveyed the information to me with no logic, I just can't comprehend. I was like, stop, start over, and what, you know, keep asking the question until I understand why it turned out the way it is. So, so that's the thing. And, but the downside though, that we, we spend too much time uh, engineering school because I, we make decisions by the numbers, and that, that's something that I, I, I realize uh, sometimes later. So when you see things as a number, um, your compassion is kind of gone. So I don't like emotion, I don't like anything subjective. Prove me by the number, that was me before. Now I think I have improved. And I, when I make decisions, especially it deals with people, I think I wait on compassion rather than judgment. I try to understand the root cause of the problem. It could be a technical problem, it could be human errors, and behind the human errors could be human family problems or any other thing along the road. I'll try to understand that and solve the problem based on my better understanding of the human side of the problem. Being the only female in the family also comes with what Dr. Gandhi calls a double burden, where women are expected to be responsible for a large amount of unpaid work as well as their paid work. Such responsibilities have taught her to manage her time efficiently. Now that she's a mother of two teen daughters, she also encourages her husband and her brothers to also take part in household chores. I get to carry double burden. That doesn't sense that. Gandhi, you can't um, go play, you can't ride a bike. No, stop watching cartoon, come help in the kitchen. You know, being that a girl kind of put me the, a lot of expectation in, in both ways. So yes, I went to help my mom in the kitchen very effectively, efficiently, get things done and watch cartoon with my brothers. And I would do that, you know, perfectly and ran out, climb trees with my brother. Back then, I didn't know that was an issue. <laughs> but now I do. <laughs> yes, now my husband, my brothers, they have got to do all the same thing. I don't teach the same thing that, um, you know, the, the house cleaning is a girl's job. I, that is never my conversation. It's all about living together, um, make a great team. We need both great women and great men working together. So we, not that I teach equality, but I just don't make a case on gender bias at all. So I don't say that you're a girl, you can't play soccer. I promote them to play soccer, uh, but they don't like it anyhow. Um, so that's kind of thing that I kind of grew my two daughters to be, that you can do anything you want. Although there are many successful women working in top positions, she undeniably admits that at a certain point, women would have to make some tough choices about their lives. I think a lot of stuff happens because of the life stage. 
And I think that happens to me as well. We'll, we'll put the uh, gender equality aside. Even though we can make decisions, uh, we can get the top class, you know, top of our class, but some certain life stage that women would need to think twice and probably need to decide for their own that they need to slow down the career and pay attention to something else that they think is more important, which is a family. Having kids is one thing that I have to tell you is, is changed my life. Even though I am a grand achiever, I want to be at top all the time, I want to be the leader all the time, I need to ask myself what exactly that I see more important, work, my career, or my family or my kids. Each of us think differently. Nothing, not, it's not, I'm not saying who's right, who's wrong, but to me, I, I said it clear, the success of my kids is my success. So one point you know, in my career life, I take, make decision to leave job. Leave a full, I left a full-time job, but I never be a stay-at-home mom though. Um, a part-time a freelancer to make sure that I have you know, more time with my kids during the critical stage of their lives. I would like to see the infrastructures or the norm of the community and the societies that open up the same doors, opportunities to women and men or any genders in between. So I think that's you know, how we empower them. Give them tools, give them knowledge, give them wisdom, and at the end, give them the opportunity to shine. I pick up one of the, the postcards that I really like a couple of years back, and I send it up you know, right to, to my daughters in Massachusetts. It said, the person you're destined to become is the person that you decide to be. So you write your own destiny.